All right, Shalom. Uh, first and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elders at Great Millstone that rule well, and blessings to the hopeful elect out there teaching this word in all sincerity and truth. Um, yeah, I'm just going to get straight into it, man. I'm going to get Psalms 18. Uh, Spirit's been on me to go into the name of the Lord, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, and it reads The name of the Lord Yahweh is a strong tower, the righteous runneth into it and is safe. And the reason why I'm speaking on this scripture here is because basically we're coming into a time where um, uh, basically Esau is looking to come down on us having great wrath because he knows that he had but a short time, man. All right. He's setting up the, you know, the, the new face of so-called terrorism now as a so-called black man or a Jake. All right. With, with, with an unkept beard, so to speak, man. And just basically looking like, you know, just looking mean and manly as all hell, man. All right, and 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 Esau Esau is a faggot by nature. He's a paedophile. He likes touching little boys, so he's gonna see a manly Jake as a threat. He doesn't want to look at a manly Jake because that makes him feel inferior. So he's gonna have to demonize the children of Israel, man. All right, they they want to do away with us, man. But those that call upon the name of the Lord, those that are of the elect, are gonna get saved in that time, man. That's why the scripture says in Isaiah thirty three and six. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Because when they come in like a flood, man, and they're going to be like madmen sparing none. And I'm quoting scriptures here, but we're coming into these times where the Lord said that he's sharpening his sword to make a sore slaughter in Ezekiel 21 and 9, man. That time is coming, man. The time of Jacob's trouble. All right. So you got to make sure that you got the name of the Lord, man. But it's not just enough to have the name of the Lord. You got to you got to believe in the name of the Lord. You can't just call upon the name of the Lord. You got to call upon it in belief. OK, because like Paul said, in fact, let me get it real quick, man. All right. This is first Corinthians four. I believe it's 19. That's right. It says, but I will come to you shortly if the Lord Yahweh will and will know not the speech of them which are puffed up. But the power, now why am I bringing this scripture out? Because you had an example um, of a guy that, uh, there was a video circulating around on the internet where this guy, uh, Apostle Gabar even spoke on it, he got hemmed up by the police. And I think whether it was him or his woman that called upon the name of the Lord, or Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, they called on, a, on, a, on the name of Yahweh or Yahweh Shai, and they, they still got dealt with by the cops, man. But the, the, the scripture says, when a man's ways pleaseth the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. All right. So they were calling upon the name of the Lord, but they weren't justified by the name of the Lord because they weren't calling upon it. Uh, they were calling upon it through the speech, but not with the power, man. All right. And not only that, they could have been set up as, as well, man. So they weren't calling upon it in faith. They weren't calling upon the name of the Lord in faith, man. The, 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 the scripture said in Proverbs 18 and 10, the righteous runneth into the name of the Lord and is safe, not the wicked. All right, because the, the, the scriptures also said that in the times that we're coming into, many are going to say, Lord, Lord, but he's going to say, I didn't know you. All right. So you, you can't get puffed up by the speech. You go out there, you know, all kind of precepts you want to speak and you could give them 10,000 volt speeches and calling upon the name of the Lord. But if you don't sincerely believe and if you ain't speaking in, with belief and in the power, not the speech, but the power. OK, in fact, let's 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 go into the uh, into the into linear, man. And get some of these definitions, because when you go into the word speech, it comes from the uh, from the Greek logos, which basically means word. It says of speech, a word uttered by a living voice embodies a conception or an idea what someone has said. So simply just saying the name of the Lord isn't enough. You've got to be doing the will of the Lord. You've got to believe. And if you believe and fear the name of the Lord, then you would do the will of the Lord. All right, because the scripture says in Proverbs 1 and 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But fools despise no, no, uh, wisdom and instruction or knowledge and instruction, so to speak. All right. Because when you're out there in the world, man, back in the day, man, you might try to get some bucks from a chick. You might tell her you love her. You might say it. But even then you didn't know being in the world. You didn't even know what the, what the word love meant. All right. Now you're in the truth. You know what love means. For this is the love of the Most High that we keep His commandments, man. That's the real. That's real love. That's what love. That's the word. That's the way the word love is supposed to be used, man. But in the world, you were saying you. Oh yeah, I love you. You know, you know, just scooting up on the sofa next to her. Put you might put your arm around her and shit. Try to grab a tit. Yeah, you know, I love you. You know, just to try and get that pussy, man. You know. 
Hell, you might have been doing it in wickedness. You might have been doing it. You might have been committing adultery, man. Telling a, a bitch that already had a man that you loved her just to try and dick her down, man. And that's wicked as all hell. But now we've been called under grace, man. Now we've been called through this word, the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, who gave us the way of repentance, man. And we sincerely repented. Now we received the knowledge and instruction. Now we know what the, uh, the word love means, man. It's to do the will of the Heavenly Father. Now let me get an example of two. Uh, in fact, I'm going to get you an example of, of, of guys uh, in the ancient days that actually called upon the name of the Lord. But they got dealt with, man. It's Acts 19. I believe it's 19 and uh, I'm going to start from 13. The vagabond Jews. Here we go. Then certain of the vagabond Jews... Exorcists took upon them to call over them which had wait took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Yahweh Shai Hamashayak. Alright? Saying we adjure you by the name Yahweh Shai. We adjure you by Yahweh Shai whom Paul preacheth. So they were they approached this guy that had evil spirits on him. Alright? Guy might have had legion on him and shit, man. Alright, they go up to him, they think they're calling upon the name of the Lord just through the speech, but not with power. Not with belief, because they weren't doing the will of the Heavenly Father, man. They thought they could pull a fast one. They thought that they could just go up to a, a demon, uh, a, a, a specimen <laughs> that had demons on him, and call upon the name of the Lord. But hey, really and truly, let's see what happened. And there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jew, and a, and a chief of a, of a priest which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Yahweh Shai I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? So the demon was like... I know Paul, I know Yahweh Shai, but who the fuck are you, man? You know, you, you, can, you can imagine it, put yourself there, just, you know, I know Yahweh Shai, I know Paul, but who are you? Just imagine the, the, the demonic, uh, demo, demonic entity standing before them, and the face, the look on their faces when they actually received the response from the demon as they called upon the name of the Lord, but then see what happened in verse 16, it says, and the, and the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them, Row! jumped on them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded, probably had scars all over them, broken arms and shit. I don't know for sure, but really and truly, man, you know them demons, man, them demons got superhuman strength. In fact, let's prove that. When you go into the book of um, Mark, the fifth chapter, and the fourth verse, you know, you had the. In fact, let me just read it from the top. And they came over into the other side of the sea, unto the country of the God, uh, uh, Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs. So this guy was all fucked up, man. This guy was dwelling among tombs, man. Them graveyards just chilling, lounging, rocking back and forth, legion on him. Nobody could, it says, and no, and no man could bind him. No, not with chains. So you're trying to tell me, man, you might try to bind this guy. You know, a cop's like, a cop will come up to you, put them shackles on you. You ain't getting out of them handcuffs, man. No matter how much you kick and you scream, man, unless you're some fucking master thief pick locker and you've got some fucking double jointed shit going on and you get yourself out of them chains, man. But this, this demon didn't need no fucking pick lock, man. It had that superhuman strength on smash. That demonic strength, man. Hey, the Lord said we wrestle against, not against flesh and blood, but against spirits, man, and principalities, man. Spiritual wickedness in high places. A spiritual warfare out here, man. Verse 4. Because he had been bound oft, often, bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. Case in point, man, the strength of them demons are strong, man. So these vagabond Jews that got rolled up on by that demon, man, he just told them straight, look, I know Yahweh Shai, and I know Paul, man. I know you. I know you're coming. I know who you're talking about. But who the fuck are you, man? So you better take care of how you, you call upon the name of the Lord, man. If you be calling on the name, the name of the Lord in vain, man, in, 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 to serve your own, your own belly, man, all right, doing it not with, do it in speech, but not in power, not in, in sincerity, not doing the will of the heavenly Father. But then you want to call on the name of the heavenly, heavenly Father when it suits you, man. When it, when you're getting hemmed up by a policeman or something like that, man. All right, by a Roman centurion. All right, then you want to call on the name of the Lord. Hey, the Lord ain't dealing with half-assed niggers, man. That's why the Lord says those that are lukewarm are gonna get spewed out 
of his mouth, man. I pray first and foremost that I ain't one of them guys, man. I want to endure until the end, man. Ask yourself the same question. Do you want to endure until the end? Do you want to do the will of the Heavenly Father? Do you want to be puffed up in speech? Or do you want to have the power, man, behind you? Because there's power in this word, man. All right, and that's all I'm going to say on that. I ain't going to keep it too long, man. Hey, man. In power, not in speech. In fact, that's what I'm going to call this video, man. In power, not in speech, man. So with that, Lord willing, you are King, we're edified, man. We've got to believe on the name of the Yahweh, where Yahweh Shai, man. And call upon it in faith, in power, not in speech. And with that, man, I'm going to say Shalom, man.